God has deluded us in, in three different ways. Waking, dreaming and sleeping. God has deluded us. Yes. Krishna has yes. deluded us. Yes. So Krishna doesn't teach you to meditate. Yes, there we go then. So the way to the truth is coming from Krishna, the one you say lied to you in the first place. Because by your own admission, the Hindu God lies. And by our theology, a liar is the devil. So he's deceived us, but he gave us the truth. What's an illusion? An illusion is you don't see it the way it is. What's a deception? I think it's the same thing. <laughs> uh, that guy's arrest my case. So, um, Raphael, you wanted to talk to me um, about yes. Hinduism. Yes. And this is, this is the level of our madness that we're stood here in the rain. But <laughs> if you're going to be British and live in England, you can't stop for the rain. No way. You know? So, so what is it, Raphael, that you wanted to talk about? Because you came to me whilst we were off camera and said that you wanted yes. to speak. Yes. So, so, what would you like to talk all, about? My name is Raphael. Nice to meet everyone. I already know what comments, uh, the comments. I, I made a couple of videos already. I already seen some comments. First of all, I want to say all glories to God. Everything is owed to Him and everything is owned by Him. First thing I want to say is that I want to uh, represent Hinduism in a positive manner in the part. I want to express the knowledge that I've acquired um, through many different teachings, you know. Um, so what do you want to talk to me about? Bro? Yes, yes. Um, I just want to talk about the, the Trinity. Okay. I want to talk about um, how this Holy Spirit can, you know, be inside me and what I can do with it. Because in Hinduism, we believe that we are all born with divinity in us. Uh, we are a part of the divine, and we can experience the divine through the connection that's between us. So we don't say that the the, the Lord is separate from our creation. We say that He's fundamentally the the foundation of our creation, and we are intersected with Him. We are connected to Him spiritually. Um, and we can experience him. Now that leads to many questions because then I'm making a, an assault, I'm saying that you can experience him subjectively. And then I would say then I have no reason to say that this is the truth. Well, I disagree because the teachings sorry, where this comes from. Conversation with yourself because you created a premise. Sorry, a sorry, premise. sorry. Go on. So I so I as so I'm saying there's this oneness with like, us, you said, and we you can said experience before, like, this. You said before the camera rolls that you want to. Um, Express your knowledge about Hinduism, but yes. with respect. We're not yeah. here to just give you a platform. No, to no, talk no about I was Hinduism. just, I was just trying to get to the a, point to ask you. So I'm trying to get you okay. to that point. Because right. yeah, yeah. if you create a premise and then you answer your own premise, you're having a conversation with yourself. So allow me to reply to okay. something that you've said already. All right. Now, now, as Christians, we believe that the essence of God is completely unknowable, and that the essence of God is completely transcendent. That the essence of God is completely separate and other to His creation. That the, the that creation, therefore, cannot share in the essence of God. But we believe as Christians that God's energies, God's activities in the world are something that we can share in. So that the power, the Holy Spirit residing in the human body, residing in the church, which excludes Hindus. Hindus can't participate in the Holy Spirit. Um, that, that, I, I'll come to that. That, 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 that allows them to begin a, a process that we term theosis, which is to become like God. In the same way that Moses is said by Yahweh, I shall make you a God to Pharaoh, I shall make you a God to Egypt in Exodus. So, as Christians, we believe that there is participation in divine energies, but not participation in divine essence. Am I right to understand from what you've said, that you believe that the essence of God interfuses in material things? Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that I dwell in creation, but creation is not in me. So I dwell in it, but creation is not in me. But what he's saying that he didn't create us, he said he only shared his essence with us. So we are that essence. So are you, are you saying that, that Krishna does not create? Krishna does not create. He cre yes, he does create. I thought he said he didn't create no, us. He create us. I mean, when I say us, I'm talking in Hinduism. We say that we are a part of that essence, that infinite essence. So yeah. we never die, and we're never. Okay. Therefore, we are always with God. We were always, uh, we we're always connected. 
good with God. So you believe you're uncreative? Yes, exactly. So that means that you believe you're a God? I mean, if that's, if that's your definition of a God, then sure. Yeah, a God is something that is uncreated. So is your, is your will corresponding to Krishna's will? Yes, exactly. At all times? It's actually, yes, actually, it's a, it's a natural instinct to go by his will. Right, right. So, so everyone does that, right? Because everyone is uncreated. Yes. Does that mean that all the Christians who reject Krishna are going with Krishna's will? It depends on their actions. Krishna says it's well, they're rejecting Krishna. They reject. I, I reject Krishna as you God. Reject Krishna. Oh no, I do reject him. I reject him. I'm saying to you right now, I reject but I'm Krishna. Krishna. Is the essence of God. And so I'm saying that I reject Krishna. Yeah, that's fine. But so, you're not so my question, rejecting Krishna, because so, Krishna is the one who's holding you alive. You so, can't reject. So, him. so my question to you is: Is my verbal rejection, my intellectual rejection of Krishna, is that? corresponding to Krishna's will no no right so you're a God I'm a God Krishna's a God so now we have a war of wills between this God and the Krishna God right there is no different gods we're all talking about one God here. but the only problem is is that you're deluded in this material world so therefore you have a perception of this ultimate and you're baffled because you cannot understand it what i'm what i'm claiming is that med through meditation you can experience him so there is no more delusion no rafael you're not you're not you're not dealing with my argument okay go on. you created a premise that? you said that the divine essence yes, is rafael. infused in creation that we are not that we are that, that, we are that we are not that we are not created <laughs> yes we are not created. right which means that we are gods Okay. Right, I so mean, if, if we I are mean, gods yeah. and I reject Krishna, yeah. then logically I, my will is in conflict with Krishna's will. Okay. Right. So if how many how many wills now, does the god of the okay. Hindus have? He has one. He has one will. But your ego has infinite. It wants to do whatever it wants, but the true objective is only one and that's the only one. And you and people express that by doing drugs, people express that by doing uh, many different bad things to in order to try to get there, but they don't know how and but the it, teachings but, tell you but how. If, but, but I'll try it again because maybe you're not following the line of my argument. If you are a God and I am a God and Krishna is a God and I reject Krishna, then that means this God is rejecting that God no, because as it's a your God. Ego that's rejecting it, not your true self. So, so what you're saying is that what you define as my true self, yes. yeah? will will accept krishna yes okay and my ego is not part of my will exactly right firstly you've got a whole bunch if, if you're representing hinduism correctly yeah. Yeah. and i suspect there might be a whole bunch of hindus that might pull you up and say that you aren't okay but but if you're representing hinduism correctly yeah. then hindus need to study psychology because oh, really? the ego is part of the human will we have no idea what the ego is when i'm talking about ego what do you what what do you define as ego? Let, you, so you define ego. Let's define our terms. There is an in Sanskrit it's called Atman. Atman. Okay. That is what we refer to the essence that we have from God. Okay. okay. That's that infinite essence that we truly are. And then God has deluded us in, in three different ways: waking, dreaming, and sleeping. God has deluded us. Yes. Krishna has yes. deluded us. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, so can I can I just jump on that point? So if you're saying Krishna has deluded us, yes. then you admit that Krishna has deceived us, correct? Deceived. Um, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. So how can you trust anything that Krishna says to you? Oh, because I thank him for that, so I can experience him again. Okay. So <laughs> so you you th the Hinduism has led you to thank a God for deceiving you. Exactly. Yes. Okay. I think you know. Christ says you shall know them by their fruits and by their fruits you shall know them. If your theology is making you celebrate deceit and lies, then your theology, from a Christian point of view, can clearly not be from God. Okay, uh, do you experience suffering in this world? Yeah. Okay, can, can a suffering te teach you a, a tough lesson, like a strong lesson? Yes, of course. How we do? Is it fair to say thank you God for putting me in that situation uh, in order for me to learn? Yes. Okay. 
So why are you thanking this God that put you in the, that 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 put you with hardship yeah. in order for you to learn? Yeah. It is the same with this. Because no I, I, let me allow me to explain. Yeah, so within the Christian worldview, yeah. the ethics that we work by as Christians is what is called virtue ethics. So that is our ethical system. That's our ethical paradigm. Okay. So it's about right attitudes, not right actions. It's not about having a list of right and wrong actions, haram and halal. It's about having a, 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 a cultivating a list of um, right virtues or right attitudes. And these attitudes and these attitudes are independent of your circumstances. So you can be rich and display the same virtues as a poor man. Exactly. And the poor man, right. So, so in that context, the suffering that we are going through, like any other circumstance, including our blessings, is an opportunity for us to display virtue. Okay? And it is that virtue that opens up the human heart so that the Holy Spirit may take space in our lives and advances so in the process the of theosis. Is, is, uh, is the Holy it, Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is, but is the Holy Spirit different? Uh, is it is it in me at all times, or do I have to? The Holy Spirit it? is not in you. Not in you. No, you you so you are sustained you, by okay, so the power the, of God's let's word. Go back to the soul, because right, would you say that your soul is infinite? Uh, no, it's no? created. So so then how can how can God sub, uh, subject me to eternal hellfire? What is that actually eternally there? Right. Yeah. So you 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 firstly. You, I'm going to defend the traditional view for once. Okay, it is. It's well known that I. It's well known that I have a minority position. But just to show that apologetics is not about defining doctrine, I'm going to defend the traditional position. So why? How does God get to send you to hell eternally? The eternal nature of the soul within the traditional Christian view isn't that it has an infinite beginning. It, ha it is that from the point of its creation, it continues. But that, that, uh, that absolutely destroys the... the, the <laughs> that absolutely contradicts infinity. Well, because infinity never had a beginning. And there is no point in Yeah, so, so we, we need to use our terms more accurately. So we would say... We would say... Cannot, we, 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 no, so we need to use our terms more accurately. I was just going along with the term that you use. But if you want, if now you're picking up a point about that. Let me define my term. Let me define. My, let me define my term. Let me define my term. So what I what I believe happens when someone goes to hell in the traditional view is that they participate in an energy of God that sustains their soul continuously, millennia after millennia. Is this explained specifically in the Bible? What what what, what specifically are you looking for? The attributes. Of that soul uh, getting that infinity energy, the actual, the, the actually process of this, because Hinduism says there is no proof like this. You've always been that infinite. Yeah. It's just that you're deluded uh, of Maya, a creation of the Lord. Right. So, so here, let, let let's come back to you on it because. No, no, no. Let's answer the question. No, no, no. How so, can how can somebody be infinite from a point? It, of no, time no. Hold on. What what are we saying? What are we? No, no, look, I, I've I've redefined that term. Because you had a problem with the you word can infinite. It, but yeah. you haven't explained the process. So, so what I'm saying to you happens is that the God permits you to live eternally. That is the one who, who, by which you can continue to exist. So you're participating so a, in so that energy. But the soul is created, it's not uncreated. So, so, so this is a radical, this is a radical, no, there is no eternal, the soul is a created thing but in the Christian worldview. No, it can continue to live from the point of its creation. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm not saying that it has an eternal past. I am saying that if, I am saying, I am saying that God can permit the soul that he creates to continue in, into an eternal right. future. But the Bible doesn't say that uh, by God's will or uh, uh, until he says so you'll be in hell or until he wants you. He says you will be there eternally. Yes, that's fine. Eternally. So, so what's your problem? That means that this soul that's there is eternal because it's experiencing... What, what, but you, are you redefining eternal? No, I'm not. So eternal we agree. Oh, so infinite. are we no, saying... No beginning, no end. No, so you're redefining what I said. Listen to what I say. 
because you're okay. asking about my belief, Raphael. Okay. If you ask about my belief, you've got to listen to what I say to you about my belief. Okay. I said to you that the soul is created. Yes. That means it has a beginning. Yes. Say it has a beginning. But I'm saying that's a do, contradiction. Do, no, do but you? What I'm no. Saying, what you're saying is a contradiction. No, no, no. Hold know? on one second. Hold on one second. I understand what you're, you're saying. You're, this is sophism of the worst kind. You're just playing with words. Okay. Use whatever language, whatever language suits you best. If you don't like the word eternal, pick another one. But listen to what I'm saying and then use whatever language you want to to describe what I'm saying, the process. The soul has a beginning. If God wants it to, it can continue to exist. And that existence can go on for eternity. Okay? Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Right. Now, what would you like to say in response to that? Because I would like to come back to something that you said. Okay, well, I say I think that's not the way that God has made us. And I don't think that's how God works. That's proven by our scripture. But let's move on to right. So, Because so, then if I'm going to keep going back at it, then I'm just so, picking. So, Raphael, Raphael, let, let's... Yeah. Thank you. Raphael, let's... <laughs> he's a good hype man, isn't he, JC? <laughs> <laughs> he's a... He's a charwaller and everything. <laughs> so, so Raphael, like you, you stated, and it's on camera, that you believe that your God has deceived you. Now, if someone, if someone deceived you in in ordinary life, would you trust them? We're talking about God here, right. not somebody that's, uh, that has no relevance to me. It, no, it, it, it has really importance. Because if, if you're saying that God is a deceiver, okay. firstly, for us immediately, every Christian knows that, the, that, that Satan is the father of lies. So, so immediately, this is the reason why we Christians say that the Hindu gods are demons. Because by your own admission, the Hindu god lies, and by our theology, a liar is the devil. So, he's deceived us, but he gave us the truth. Why did he bother to deceive you in the first place? That's up to him. God knows best. Okay, so your God is a fickle God then. Okay. Okay. A morally but fickle God. That's your opinion, right? I well, mean, do you know it, what? That's as much as me saying that I believe that putting a soul into eternal hell is, is wrong. That's up, my, that's up to my feelings and my emotions and my opinion. What I'm bringing forth to you is that we, yes, we're deluded. Uh, aren't you saying that you're that God has uh, sent you into a world of sin and you are in sin? On Christianity claims the same that you're born in sin, you're deluded, you're, you're sinful, right? But I gave you the truth. It's the same thing. No, so it's where not. is the contradiction? Okay, so allow me allow me to explain. Firstly, um, a fickle God, a fickle person is someone who just does what they want with no consistency, okay. no moral consistency. Allah is a fickle God described in the Quran. He does what he wants. The Hindu God is a fickle God. Why? He does what he wants. Why? Why? You just said that, Al, that, that Krishna deceives you and gives you the truth. And, and the, I asked you, well, why did he deceive you in the first place? And your reply was, <laughs> That he, God does what he wants. Well, uh, the Christian best. God, I the Christian. God knows best. Fine, I didn't fine. Say that he, Raphael, that's why he Raphael, did. Raphael. No, what you're allow doing, me to brother, finish a point. Other, 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 Raphael. I told you God knows best. Raphael. And you said that I said God does what he wants. Raphael. Does God do what he wants? Ra of Ra course Rafa he's good. No, no, hold on. Let, let me explain a fundamental difference. Okay. So, the, the, the reason why I would invite you and all Hindus yes. to become Christians okay. is because the God of the Christians displays all the moral characteristics that he commands and calls so us to display. No, let me finish. Except that Krishna is a liar. Why is he a liar? Right, you said that Krishna deceives us, yes or no? Yes. Is someone who deceives you a liar? No. There you go. Lying, this is the irrationality lying, of lying Hindu Hindu belief. Lying is not giving the truth, but Krishna has given the truth. So where is the liar? So so he didn't deceive you then. He de deceiving and lying is two different things. So uh, you deceiving said deceiving is uh, going away from the objective. Raphael, lying is that the objective Raphael, I'm only going off what you. Raphael, I'm only going off what you're saying. 
So, and, and we've got it all on camera, bro. You said Krishna did, deceives I, you. I didn't now, would you like would I you said. like to take that back and say Krishna no. doesn't deceive you? No. I I'm gave saying, him a way out, guys. No. I gave him an exit and he didn't take it. So are you right? saying I'm contradicting myself? No, what I'm saying is, yeah. you're not contradicting yourself. You're, okay. you're being quite consistent. Yeah. What I'm saying is that yeah. you can't see the logical consequence of your statements. Because if you're saying Krishna deceives you, then I'm right to say that Krishna is a deceiver. And if Krishna is a deceiver, then he is an inferior God to Yahweh because Yahweh is the father of all truth. Okay. Right. The, the Patuma Ters Alertios, okay. the spirit of truth, okay. the Holy Spirit, okay. the Panuma Hagios, okay. that Christ promised us is described by Christ in John 14 to 16 as the spirit of truth. Okay. God reveals okay. truth. Why does he he have doesn't to reveal this to you. Right, great question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a fundamental difference yeah. between the Christian worldview yeah. and the Hindu worldview as you represent it. And yes. to be you, fair, you guys, did you say that because I want to say this to, is all for me. Like this is coming to, from me. To, to, to be not fair, every Hindu I, I, they will all tell you different. Just like Krishnas, yeah. just like if I ask a question for a Christian, I, on, on every a on every central doctrine. On every central doctrine, I speak for all Christians. Because you cannot oh, be a Christian no, you, unless you believe in the creed of Nicaea. That's so a, anyway, that's a, that's up to anyway, with, anyway, me. anyway, that's a good, that's a bold Se separate, <laughs> separate talk, separate talk. That's a bold statement. Separate talk. Go on. So, so speaking about your representation of Hinduism, yes. okay? Because I, I, I want to free the Hindu world from what this man is saying. <laughs> like, like you, you, um, you have represented Krishna as a liar, and he is responsible for the deceit that we endure. In the Christian worldview, right, what has happened is that human nature is corrupted. Human nature so he is broken. You corrupted. No, the 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 corruption came right back at the first humans. So something that's in my nature happened after creation. Correct. Yes, okay. and it's passed on genetically from father genetically. to son, from father to son, from father to son. So God allowed that to happen. So from the first humans yes. that are represented by Adam in Genesis, yes. down through the genealogies of all human beings. There has been an innate selfishness, a corruption of the nature that turns away from God, that is blinded to you. God. Yeah. God is not responsible. He did not proactively do that. Yeah. What he did is he created an environment in which something could happen. He didn't make it happen. You're saying Krishna made it happen. No. Oh, what now I'm you're saying, not. So he's not responsible for the Krishna deceit. created Maya. Go on, who's Maya? Maya, Maya is, is the, the world that we're experiencing. It is an illusion because an illusion means that it is not the way as we perceive it to be. It is the way we perceive it is not how it is. Okay, let, let me reply to that. Okay. Because what you've done is confirm that Krishna is a liar. Because Krishna created an yeah, illusion. Yes. Okay, perfect. That's up to you. You can call Krishna a liar. It doesn't make a difference. No, you called him a liar. I'm calling Brother, him a liar I'm because saying, of what you that's said. Like me saying, that's like me saying that your God, your God is, is not all merciful because he sends people to eternal hell. Right, so let me address this that point. This is out of your feelings, brother. No, 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 no. Let me address that point because, because you're totally wrong again in okay. your perception of the Christian faith. The scriptures are very clear that yes. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whomever should believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Right. Now, what does that mean? That means it, you, no, you put no, your hold on. and then he has to save you from no, that No, No, hold on, hold on. Yeah, the difference between us, Raphael, is I'm basing my commentary on what you're saying. You're not listening fine. to I'm, what I'm, I'm fine saying. With what you're saying. So, yeah. right. So, so allow me, allow me to, to explain. And let me, allow, allow me to explain the the Christian position because, yeah. like lots of people, you just don't understand it. But you you can't. Talk you just, Raphael. You just, you see, you're not even listening now. Okay. Like this conversation is actually breaking down because you okay. don't have the emotional and mental maturity. No, Keep I up. Do, but what you're so saying listen to is what I'm, I'm saying. God a liar listen, I'm that you are saying it. You said that. Krishna created Maya, and Maya is, it, is an like, illusion. I, I just want to say this. Is an illusion a deceit or reality? He, he, 
the sky blue. It's, it's, it's an illusion from our, expen uh, our point of view. So it's an illusion? Yes. Is an illusion a deceit or reality? It's a deceit. There you go. So but I'm you not calling Krishna a liar. He's calling Krishna a liar. Okay, okay but what, what am I also saying? That Krishna says that you are the reality. So know yourself and you will know that okay. this is an illusion. So let me, let, 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 let me come back to something. So you let, can say he's a liar, right? But he also gave you the alternative to what he created. Okay, he done. Yes. Okay, so allow me to reply to something that he said. That, uh, yes. that our God is not all merciful. Um, because it sends people I'm to hell. It's like saying, Raphael, say Raphael, that. Raphael. Let, let, let me reply the to that comment. Knows, yeah. Raphael, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't worry, people will see. I'm not yeah? worried. I'm so trying to get allow you me, to allow me, I don't care Raphael, about the Raphael. Yeah. If you keep interrupting me, I'm going to start interrupting okay, you, you, and I guarantee when I do, Apologize. you're going to start complaining. Okay. And then if we start talking yeah. over one another, yeah. I will raise my voice. That's fine. And I promise you, I can raise my voice louder than you. And I can That's do it fine. for longer. So let's have a polite conversation. Oh, I, I beat him at that at one yeah. time. <laughs> they did. He did beat me at that one time. He did beat me at that one time. So let, let's let's come back to this point, okay? Right? So in terms of in terms of um, your statement about, you know, oh God is not merciful. God has given salvation as a free gift to every Hindu. To use an analogy of a debt, right? We're all in debt to God. It's an analogy. Okay? And God has given everyone the check in the back pocket. You've got it in your back pocket. He's, the pagan's got it in his back pocket. Uncle Asif had it in his back pocket. Oh, JC had it in his back pocket. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. this, brother. Street Mike, street but Christian Mike, or not, Street Mike had it or has it in his back pocket. The difference between the Christian and the non-Christian is that the Christian cashed the check. It doesn't mean that you haven't got the check. You just haven't cashed it. So it's not that God hasn't given you salvation. He has freely. You don't, he's given it to you now as a Hindu. You just haven't accepted it. That's the, that, that's what we, that's why we Christians say God is all merciful. Because everyone, pagan, Hindu, Muslim, Jew, atheist, agnostic, has been given the check now as they are. But you cash it by accepting the Lordship of Jesus Christ. that we're looking for we just have to go backwards and inwards instead of trying to find it in the outer world but but my point is the reason why i reject krishna bearing in mind that this is Krishna's one not god, the only god uh, in Hinduism. yeah i know apparently to you i'm a god you're a god so that's your that's your definition okay what was your god. definition of god so god himself Unexplainable, we don't know. Unexplainable. There are some attributes that I can point out to. Such as? Such as he is smaller than the smallest and biggest of the biggest. Okay. He is infinite, he never, he ne was never born, he will never die. Are you, do you never born, you never yes, die? I am, I share that attribute with him. You share that attribute with I don't, him. Okay. I don't share his, uh, his actual, his, his personal desire. Mm -hmm. I don't share his personal will. Okay. And his personal, I get the attributes from it, like the essence, like love and, and kindness. I get those, but I don't actually get his actual personality. Yeah. I, I can try to calm him and intimidate him, but I cannot. The only way I can experience that infinity is by dissolving into his infinity, uh, his infinite energy, and we okay. can do that. And, and do you believe, so, so for us as a Christian, one of the key attributes of God is that he is uncreated, that he has no beginning. Okay, are you saying that, that, I just want to be clear because I don't want to misrepresent your position and obviously you've pulled me up on this a couple of times so clearly you, you, you are, um, you take umbrage at my usage of the term God in the way that I have. Are you saying that in Hinduism someone can have some of the attributes of God but not other attributes and therefore is not God? Right, okay, that's fine. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to modulate my critique based upon what you're saying because I don't want to straw man you that's always how the worst arguments work okay so one of the one of the one of the 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 key issues that I would say that I have based on what you you have said is that you have described Krishna as a deceiver okay now and, and he's done it again right so my point to you is 
if you met two people, one you knew who was a liar and one who you knew was to be truthful, which one would you trust? <laughs> But this, you're, talk, you're taking a scenario of human beings. I'm, I'm just asking you, which but one would you trust? The question is non-relevant to my claim. No, it is, it is. No, now, let me explain no, why it is. Because I'm talking about God and you're talking about human beings. You're but, trying to, no, we're you're talking about relationships. Analogy. You're trying an analogy. No, we're talking about relationships. You are a human being, right? No, actually I'm not. But uh, what are you then? <laughs> I, am, I am a spiritual being in a human body. Okay, right. So if this body dies, I'm still alive. Okay, so you don't believe that, that there's such a thing as a human being? I don't. The human being, biologically, physically, of course, it's a whole mechanic. So, so when I asked you, you and, and I said, you are a human being, you went, no, I'm not. When you say you... Do you know what a contrarian is? No. A contrarian is just someone who takes up the opposite position for the sake of taking no, up no, the opposite position. No, no, it's not. Position. Because this is the fundamental teachings of Hinduism, that you are not the body, you are not the mind. You That's are... not what I asked you. Yes, it is. I asked you if you're a human being. Exactly. Are you a human being? I'm, I live in a human body. Okay, are you a human being? No. Okay, right, fine. Let's just talk about it using his terms because I don't want to stumble over the words. I want to get to the heart of the issue. You're saying that as a being, right, my criticism of Hinduism is that a, a being, you have relationships. You have relationships with other beings and you have relationships with other divinities, let's call it. But the thing is, in all of those relationships, the maxim remains the same. You trust those that are trustworthy. And I am saying that by your own admission, you have said Krishna is not trustworthy because he is a deceiver. He gave us the truth, so he can be. He, he is the way to But he gave us the truth because of a lie that he gave us, right? Right, so this is the point. So how can you trust if that he's God now giving best. you the truth? God knows best. How do you know he's giving you the truth? Because of the Vedic uh, knowledge that we've given, um, that, that this experience that these sages had, everybody is saying that it's the same. If you look at Sikhs, they wear the, the like this turban around their head because they protect uh, where they meet the divine. No, you're not, you're not answering my question, bro. Let me, let me try again. If someone is a liar, how can you distinguish the lies from the truth? It's a liar to you, not to me. Shall, shall I tell you the way to answer my question? Because you're struggling. Oh, so you're asking me a question and you're telling me how to answer I'm telling you a better answer than the one you've offered me. The one you've offered me, the one you've offered me doesn't answer my question. No, you know why my answer is weak? Because the question is weak. So you're not getting to the heart of the problem. No, you're, you're missing the problem Krishna entirely. You're a liar. You made that claim. Not anybody on the, the camera will show you said Krishna deceives us. That's your words. That's the nature of his creation. You can take of it as bad, but so, he gave us the so, truth. So, so now that we've established that Krishna deceives us, right? The, 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 the question then becomes, how do we distinguish truth from lies? And I'll tell you how we do that. The way we distinguish truth from lies is that narrative that best describes reality. Oh, okay. Okay. So what is reality? Can you, before right. you dive into reality, it's yeah. not reality. Explain me reality. So, reality is the, 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 the fullness of our experiences, of both senses? metaphysical, no, there's more than five senses, both metaphysical and sensual. Metaphysical and sensual. Yes. Sensual as five senses? There's more than five senses, but yes, five senses are included. Tell me more than that. Well, you've got your sense of balance, You've got your sense of the end of your body. Right, but how do you Where does your body stop? Do you it's all done through the nerves and the brain. So that's all yeah. through five senses. It no, gets... there's more than five senses. Uh, let's not get caught up on that. No, it is important. It's all right, fine. Let's debate how many senses there are. How many senses do you think there are? Five. Right, what are they? Uh, touch, smell, hearing, seeing, and um, I forgot the physical. Uh, taste. 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 Right. Where's your sense of balance in that? I experience the balance through the, the connection of all five senses. Bro, you're just being a contrarian. The, 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 the sense of balance is not in your five lists. So clearly I've just identified a sixth sense. Okay, now sixth can we sense. stop having a, 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 a little debate about an insignificant point because What's emotionally you've got the temperament of a contrarian and can we deal with a the much the bigger point which is what is the nature of reality? That is, would you agree that's much yes, more important yes, than arguing about whether there's five senses or 20 odd senses? 
right? By the way, there's 20 odd senses. Aristotle was wrong, right? So, um, there, there's the so reality is is reality is the fullness of yeah. all that we experience okay. no, both metaphysically and and sensually. This is another big difference between Christianity and, and Hinduism, as you represent it, yeah. is that Christianity says the material world is good. You're Does saying, well? you're saying and it's illusion. But it just, does an illusion have to be bad? Yes, because it's based on a deceit. Okay. Unless so it's for entertainment sky, and it's Paul sky, Daniels, sky, if it's no, Paul no, Daniels, listen, listen. illusions are good. Okay, listen, so if I see the, the sky is blue, does it matter to me? I know it's not blue, I, I'm still illusion to it. It's an illusion to me. No, it it, it, to it's, my life. It, it's not an illusion. It's not an it's I don't, You don't see it as it is. That's the definition of illusion. No, 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 no. I, I am seeing a grey sky. Does everyone agree that we're seeing a grey sky right wow. now? So we're all an illusion because the sky is actually not grey. Right, no, hold on one second. The problem is... No, the, the, the problem is, is how we understand the terminology. The, and this comes to the question of truth. The question of truth is that narrative that explains the reality. So let's use the example of the color of the sky. The color of the sky is gray. That is the reality that we're all experiencing right now. These are gray clouds, okay? But the reality, the truth is that what we are seeing is a refraction of light, so of said, white light. He just said that what we perceive to be real isn't real. No. But there's truth to it. No. No, hold on. What? What, what would that, I'm not saying that this is an illusion. I would like to see the person that would argue that that sky is not grey. The reality is that it is grey. To your experience. Correct. Exactly. And that's what reality is. So anything that's in your experience is reality. Uh, the, the whole bunch of The fullness. Right, now what is truth? Yeah. Truth is the narrative that describes reality accurately. Hinduism does not make a distinction between... Uh, reality and truth, we say there is one your Hinduism, reality. Your Hinduism. Okay, yeah. We say there's one reality, anything other than that is an illusion. It is for knowledge, not for saying, oh, I'm scared because the sky is blue. It's because for knowledge to know that the sky is not blue, but it is appearing to you as blue because of the way your body, your, your set, your body is made. Because oh, God knows that a dog would see the sky differently, you know? So that's my point, that there's one reality, not one truth and one reality. I'm saying there's one reality, and the way we experience that reality is uh, is uh, an illusion. Right. So, so, and what I'm saying to you is that if your God has made it incapable it's not my God, for it's you, your God as well. no, 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 no. Krishna is not Krishna is not the God of the Christians. The Church does not recognize Krishna as a God. No, no, know, we don't my, recognize my, yeah. Shiva as a God. Is, we, is don't Jesus, recognize, we don't recognize. We don't. We don't recognize the Om the as God. We don't recognize. Um, These are names. You know, God doesn't have a name. When I say Krishna, Krishna means all attractive. So, so all God doesn't have a name. God does not have a name. So, what's the name of your God? I, I, I can say he's I can say he's God. I can say he's Krishna. I can say that he's the most powerful. I can say that he's the most just. But I, there's not one word, a name I can give God that I can say he is. He has, so he has many names. Then. Yes, exactly. So God has many names because the more just, we describe him, you're just being a contrarian because I never no. said that God couldn't have many names. No, I but just you're said saying it's my God. Yeah, well, it there is, is your no God. Your your well, God. actually, I'll be even more specific. Yeah. You are worshiping a demon. Okay. You are worshipping a devil, a, a Satan, a, a, one of the legions of Satan that, that roamed this world seeking the ruin of souls and seeking that men should worship, their, um, worship the creation rather than the creator. And that is what Hinduism is, root from from root to branch so hinduism is a lie of the devil what so the creator is not it's in creation it's the creator is n the essence of the creator is not in creation no the essence of it is not his energies part his energies are active in creation all yeah. the time me and you Can are you stood here talking to reach his, uh, his essence? yes the, so no yeah. you, you yes you go along this process infinitely of progressing along the energies of god so that you become more and more like god in the same way that if I take a knife and I stick it in a hot furnace, eventually the knife will take on the properties of the furnace. Good. It will 
Perfect. One second, one second. It, so one second, I'm talking about Christianity now. That, that it will take on the properties of the furnace. Yes. It will have light, it will give out heat, yes. it will burn you if you touch it, but at no point does the, can we say that the flame and the, the, flame and the steel are the same thing? Right. If I throw it in the fire, will it eventually get dissolved into it? Like, like dissipate? Like well, the, 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 the analogy stops there. I mean, you can stretch Why every analogy. Okay. You so, can stretch yes. every analogy to okay. the point of breaking. Okay. I'm using that analogy to explain how Christians understand participation in the energies of God as being distinct from the essence of God. So can you explain this essence to me? Oh, well, this is the point. Christians say that the energy is that the essence is unknowable. There is no, there's no language that we have to describe the essence of God. We can only say what it isn't. We can't say what it is. So then would it be, so then if you can't say what it is, can you like say that it's all powerful, infinite, all of these? These are the energies. No. These are the energies? Yes. Okay, so the essence of God, so is, is there... The, en the essence of God is beyond all description. There's no human language that can describe the essence of God. Everything that we describe about God is his energies, and it's in his energies that we can participate. So let me ask you a question on this then. If, um, if God's energies, right, are, are any of them infinite? Or any of them like made uh, kind of like, you know, that are relate to his attributes, one of his attributes? Well, the essence, I, I would say, I mean, I, I've got to say that I'm not an expert on this. But what I would say, what I would say is if you want to read further on it, read a book by Gregory Palamas called oh, yeah, The Triads. Yeah, the creation, the energy. Yeah, that, that's where I would direct you to go. There's, there's two metaphysical descriptions. You've got to understand how doctrine works in Christianity. This is an, an important point. Doctrine is our attempt to describe metaphysical reality. And there are two principal uh, descriptions that run within the Christian worldview. One is a Thomistic um, divine simplicity, and the other is the energy essence di distinction of Gregory Palamas. Okay, these are doctrinal descriptions of the metaphysical reality. Remember truth and reality are distinct things truth truth is the best description truth is the best description of reality that's that's an important thing that you've got to recognize so you are bound in this reality you'll never go into the truth as a soul no no I, let, we, <coughs> so no we, we we believe that that as christians we enter into the, the divine energies, we participate in the divine energies and we progress along those divine energies infinitely towards the essence. That's a journey that begins here and continues in the next world. Okay? So that, that, that's what we believe as Christians. That is the nature of salvation. Christ, the Logos, Jesus Christ, became human so that the fullness of your humanity could be redeemed. He conquered death by laying down his human life on the cross and raising it back, back up again so that death over you as a mortal being could be conquered and so that you could begin the journey of theosis. Sanctification, so, so theosis, divinization. Yeah, so theosis would be kind of, would you say that I'm fair? Because I don't actually know what it, the definition is. Come closer. Would you would you say would you say that um, theosis is the the, the infinite? Just a little bit louder, please. Be a gentleman and put the lady under your umbrella. Come closer. Come closer. It's it's sad that I have to tell the pagan how to behave around a woman. Carry on. So, um, in, 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 according to my understanding of Hinduism. Uh, there is dual and there is non-dual, and this is what I meant by dissolving into his okay. infinite energy. That's the non-dual version because you lose your sense of self. Right. Like you don't know yourself anymore. You are just accepting as what God says you are, and you're just infinitely abiding by it. Right. Without a body, without a not, without intellect, without anything, you just are that. Okay. So, but there is uh, God has put up heavens and hells where these souls are uh, damned. To. They, they are they are subject to it until they come to realization. Um, 
there are heavens where we agree, where we praise that infinite uh, forever. He gives us a platform to do it on. He gives us heavens where we where we eternally worship him. But that's part. Of, that's still part of the cycle of birth and rebirth, is it not? No. Because no. wait, hold on. Isn't the point of the cycle of um, birth and rebirth that you achieve the oneness with Om? Yes. And that in that oneness with Om, the sense of self disappears. Yes. Right. But you. But the point is, if there are lower heavens where you continue to praise Om, that means there still is a sense of self. Yes. So they haven't escaped the cycle of birth and rebirth. Yes, they did. I'll tell you why. Because we talk about the dissolution of the universe. Uh, Hindus say that the that God creates the universe and He dissolves the universe, He creates it, and it's like a cycle, right? However, once spiritually you attain a, a really good connection, devotion to God, He made places where they never get uh, destroyed. They never get... Um, they never get re like reborn or changed. The place is always the same. It's perfect. It's infinite. Wait, wait one second. Yeah. So, so it's not a part of the observable universe as we know it. But but the, the, but that means that the ultimate goal in Hinduism is not achieved no, no, by everyone. Is that is that fair? Different, um, there's different goals for different sects in Hinduism. Different schools of thought. For right. example, in, in Advaita Vedanta, which is the Vedic teachings from an Advaita point, which is non-dual. Oh, can can I can I ask you a question? Can we can we in so far as you understand it can we restrict our conversation to, to those elements of hinduisms that all hindus agree about yes the, these two are right but if you're saying that there are different schools about this then it's not something that all hindus agree about it is because you never hear one contradict the other okay right so i, I think that's the beauty of india i i i i want to i want to i, I want to say to you bro that that in, in your presentation of Hinduism, I find no reason to accept a God that you admit is a deceiver. That's fine. There's At no point of you... It's up to them. And, 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 and the point is, I would say to you that we're talking about relationships. My analogy, my question about, do you, would you trust a car salesman who you knew was a liar and a car salesman who you knew was truthful is completely valid to this discussion because what we've got are two messages of two gr world religions. One is Christianity, one is Hinduism. The Christians say that Christ never sinned. He never did anything wrong. He never did, he never did any, I'll come to Islam in a second. I'll come to Islam. I'll debate you on Islam. If you interrupt, I'll debate you on Islam, I promise you. Yeah? So, that Christ has never done anything wrong, but here a Hindu is saying that his God that he worships is a deceiver. And he has given no reason and no way by which we can tell truth from error, except that Except that we just got to believe what Krishna the liar tells us. When did I say that? I gave you, I gave you that the scriptures are the way to the truth. I told you that who, who, meditation is the way to the truth. Yoga, bhakti, which is devotion to God. And who told you to meditate? Uh, gurus, sages. The, the so Krishna doesn't teach you to meditate. Yes, he does. There we the go. Bhagavad then. Gita. So the way to the truth is coming from Krishna, the one you say lied to you in the first place. Okay, I mean, if that's your interpretation of it, sure. I'm only going off what you said. No, no, you're adding stuff. So listen, my point is that in God has created Maya, which is an illusion. Which is an illusion. Yes, which is an illusion, right? You live in this illusion, but he gave you the truth to this illusion. And also in this illusion, it is not bad. It, it, life is great. It, there's nothing, I don't think that- Except that we're living in a lie. Uh, it's a li No, it's not a lie. You don't see it the way it is. You can see it the way it is. That's what he's saying. So, it, so it isn't the way that it is. Exactly. To your. It, what, it is can you what define to me what a lie is? A lie is is hiding the truth. A lie or, is hiding not, the truth. Not so the truth. it isn't the way it is. Is that fair? Would it would it be fair to me to say that a lie is saying something yes. isn't the way that it, it is? It would be if God didn't give us the truth with it. He gave us the truth with it, so therefore. But he would have no reason, no need to give us the truth if he didn't lie to us. But he didn't lie. He created you in a world that What's is, an illusion? You don't see it the way it is. What's an illusion? An illusion is you don't see it the way it is. What's a deception? 
everything is the same thing. <laughs> uh, that guy's, I rest my case. I, I, did not, I rest no, no, my no, no. case. Listen, mother, I did not, I didn't try to say that what you're saying is wrong about deception. I'm saying about lying. I want to give you, I want to give you the words of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Now, what this means for Christians is that firstly, in the person of Christ himself, we see the truth about he is the he is the prism he he is the yes he is the singular prism by which we can understand ourselves our place in the world and the world itself right furthermore 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 the way when christ when we say christ is the way we are saying that in the imitation of christ we embody the truth within our own being within our own existence okay that we reorientate our lives towards God by imitation of Christ because he is the way and he is the life because right now bro you are dead in your sin your soul is dead if it would be then would I be able to have compassion love and, and joy in my day-to-day -day living the, the, would that be possible if I'm absolutely yes of course totally of course because because these things are not the things that give you life so, 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 joy, happiness. Let me all let of me these explain. Yeah, these don't bring benefits. Yes, in life. the the no, no. Of course, they bring benefits in life. But in terms of your relationship with God, you're a dead man. The, but how how do you know? Because you don't know my experience. Be, because those that are alive in Christ have life eternal. Those that are not alive in Christ are dead in their sin. So all Hindus are dead in their sin. Yeah, that, 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 that's, and what I'm saying to you, bro, is that on the one hand, you, you could follow a God. Yeah, do you want to change battery? All right, you change battery. I'm exactly the same. Right, so I, I want to leave you with this final point, right? In, your, in our conversation today, you have given me the option between Christ and Krishna. And I have given you the option between Christ and Krishna. You gave it from Krishna's perspective, I gave it from Christ's perspective. I would say to you that if you're concerned about truth, you need to follow the owner of all truth, the giver of all truth, the one who is truth himself, which is Jesus Christ. And you should reject him that openly admits to you that he is a deceiver and a liar because the father of lies is Satan himself. Okay. In my conclusion, I'd like to say that um, his argument was against um, that his argument against Krishna's illusion uh, that our world is very weak. I think it was out of emotion and feelings, and not. Uh, it was actually more of questioning the way God created us. Um, instead of uh, accepting that uh, there's more to life than just what we, as we see it. Um, there you go. Okay. Anything else? Right. So um, what I'm saying that his argument was very weak, and I told him that uh, it's it's his opinion that it's a lie, that it's this and that. Um, that's that, that's it's an emotional argument, not a logical or intellectual one at all. Thank you. Okay. I, I'd like to give you a gift, Raphael. Everyone, I have a nice conversation with. I'd like to give them a gift. So I'd like to give you a gift to have a read through. Thank you so much. All right. Sorry for well getting done. a bit uh, angry in the it. beginning. Don't worry about it. I have think it got better as, as we went. Yeah. Trust me, you were very pleasant. Thank you, bro. No very problem. pleasant. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. God bless. I'd like to. Okay, I'd like to. I'd like to do a talk on um, on something now. Okay. 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 So, uh, what what we what we saw here is Raphael's best presentation of Krishna, and Raphael's best presentation of Krishna admits that Krishna is a liar. Now, how can you tell truth from lies if the one that is supposedly giving you the truth is admitting that he lied to you? How can you trust that one? Now, we wouldn't apply the kind of crazy logic we saw Raphael using when, when he said that, well, we trust Krishna to give us the truth. We wouldn't apply that in our ordinary lives and we shouldn't apply that to our spiritual lives. If your source is admitting that he is a fickle liar who does what he wants, then don't trust him. Christ is all truth. He says, I am the truth. 
And from God, no lie is spoken. So commit your lives, commit the trust of your soul to one who admits no lie, admits no deceit. Okay, so I'd, I'd like to do a talk now. Kurt, talk number one. I'd like to talk about what's happening in India.